Remember this pic of Jonah Hill popping up a few months ago? It was everywhere. And everything that was said about it focused on the Ugg boots. Which, I mean, yeah, I kind of get that Ugg boots coming back is like uh, heralding the end of days. But what was sadly glossed over were the Capital jeans he was wearing. Specifically, the Capital 12.5 ounce denim Mexican Tocido 5P Okagili. Okagali. Okagili. Okagili. They're kind of out there and they're kind of expensive. But then one thing led to another and one afternoon of my life that I'll never get back later, I have a list of six, six, six pairs of jeans that make those capitals look sedate and actually reasonably priced. So join me as I go down a denim rabbit hole of crazy, crazy expensive jeans. Let's discuss the denim, the details and what can justify that price tag. Okay, right, so as every Scottish person ever, sort price low to high. And the first ones are those Jonah Capitals. Capital Bone G's at $560. Now, Capital is a Japanese clothing brand known for its uh, unique and eclectic and eccentric designs that blend traditional Japanese craftsmanship with modern modern streetwear influences, but a lot of other influences along with that. And it's been around for a minute. And it was established way back in 1984 by Toshiko Harata. And Capital draws inspiration from a variety of sources. Uh, American workwear, military garments, vintage clothing, and a bunch of other stuff, including strip clubs. But anyway, anyway, they take all that and infuse each piece with the brand's um, distinct Japanese sensibility. Would that be the best way to put it? Capital's range of products include denim, outerwear, knitwear, footwear, accessories, and they're all crafted with a meticulous attention to detail and a focus on just the best quality materials. I mean, it's got that distinctive aesthetic, that commitment to craftsmanship, and that means Capital has earned a pretty devoted following, not just amongst like denim heads, but just guys who are into fashion all over the world. This particular pair is part of the Capital Country line. This is where the already experimental Capital gets really experimental and goes all out in the detailing, distressing and dyeing techniques. The design of this piece takes its inspiration from, from Mexican festivals. You know, those, those big wide bone motifs, they're, they're intricately embroidered onto the sides. And if you look closer, the embroidered is creating using a sort of traditional weaving techniques that, that features very intricate patterns. The, the jeans themselves are cut from 12.5 ounce raw denim that doesn't seem to be salvaged by the look of it. It, it. it looks like it's had a wash also. It's got a cinch in the back, a slightly tapered fit, and what looks to be a pretty high rise. These jeans, they cost $560. And, okay, so what do they have that really that justifies that price tag? Well, I mean, the jeans themselves are dope, but nothing all that special or all that out there, at least as far as you can see. You can get similar fitting, similar detailed jeans for about half the price, and those jeans are going to be salvaged to boot. And so I guess the extra cost goes on the embroidery, which is given that they are just expensive and not insanely expensive. I guess that's done with, with modern machines, not the old school sort of hand cranked ones. So worth it? I mean, yeah, kind of. There, there's definitely some work that goes into these, but I think you're paying for a bit more than that. The name for one, uh, not in the same way you do with some fancy fashion brand, but still the capital name comes to the price tag and you're paying for the vision. I mean, who else other than the capital is gonna put these out there? Right, next. Oh, and uh, links in the description to all of these jeans in the list, along with the CRD sales page where you can get some, get some far more sedate and more sensible jeans. Okay, now, next, and fuck, this is a mouthful, so bear with me. The Oni Denim 611 ASKS Awashawi times Kakishabu 17 ounce hand dyed relaxed tapered jeans. They cost $810. And I probably just murdered all of those Japanese pronunciations. Um, bear with me with these. I said, I'm gonna do what they do and just shorten them up. Right, um, we're gonna get into the weeds with this one. And by the end, you'll see why they cost north of 800 bucks. And you'll actually be wondering why they don't cost more. First up, these jeans are rare. Uh, there's only 163 pairs produced worldwide, which is a weird number, but anyway. The cotton yards are meticulously hand dyed by skilled craftsmen and it takes a total of 14 months to create the fabric for actually producing the jeans. The denim, the fabric itself, is created using a traditional Japanese methods of awashawi and kakishibu dyeing, which are labor intensive, and so is trying to pronounce it. They're labor intensive and, the time, and they're time consuming. Our AS requires indigo leaves to be carefully collected and placed under thick straw mats for months, while KS involves fermenting juice of unripened parmesan fruits, parmesan, par parsimian fruits, 
and using this uh, dye stuff. That kind of dye stuff also reacts to light, so there's like this slow color change over time, it's not just fades. The jeans themselves have all the amazing construction you'd expect from a pair of Onis, so copper buttons, high quality pocket bags, heavy duty bar tacks, and a natural deer hide leather patch that bears the serial number of each pair. The cut is based on the iconic 622, it's a relaxed tapered cut. It's got a modern slim silhouette with a little bit extra room in the top block for comfort and it tapers from the knee down to quite a narrow leg opening. I mean, with all that, I can really say that these are worth the price. This, this is clearly a labor of love and I can't imagine that Oni is making too much money on every pair. It's that very Japanese thing of doing things the best way they can be done and to, to help the practicalities of things like turning a profit. Next up, we're sticking to Japan with these. The Momentaro 13.5 ounce 0405i Ultimate Natural Indigo Denim High Tapered Fit. They cost $1,512.02. Don't know why they've got such, such weird price tags. Anyway, they're fucking expensive. Right, the Momentaro Ultimate Natural Indigo Denim is it's another masterpiece of craftsmanship. From the cotton to the dyeing to the weaving, they really they showcase all of the skills that the guys over there at Mamtaro have. I mean, the denim itself is made of extra long staple top grade Zimbabwe cotton that's been grown actually indoors and hand picked. This cotton is renowned for its strength and its softness with, with the hand feels, the texture of it. It's more, it's more like silk rather than, than cotton. It's, it's amazing stuff. The natural indigo, that part of it, the dyeing process, is undertaken by Momentaro's best craftsmanship using centuries old traditional Japanese dyeing techniques. The cotton yarns are dyed 30 times with 100% natural indigo and this can only be done once a day before the process is repeated. So it takes a bloody long time. The denim is woven on the first generation GL9 uh, and that's a, I believe that's a half hand operated vintage loom. And so it takes ages to, to weave even a small amount of denim. I think it takes five to seven days to create enough fabric to create a pair of jeans. The jeans themselves are pretty special. I mean, for 1500 bucks, they fucking should be. They've got a, a natural indigo dyed Japanese silk lining on the yoke. So if you're, if you're going commando, that's gonna feel pretty good. The pocket bags, they are made from the same Zimbabwe cotton, which is also woven on the Geo9 loom. And they've gone to the next level when it comes to hardware. The rivets and the top button, they're made of 925 silver. And then there's the patch. I mean, they didn't go for leather, they actually went for fabric, and they went for a natural indigo shishiko patch that's been hand woven. I mean, it, it gives it a, a more soulful look than the typical machine made shishiko. Then it's been hand embroidered with a design that depicts the, the magical gourd, and that's said to catch evil spirits and bring good luck and long life. So. It's always nice to have your ass covered with that. Now, they cost about 1500 bucks. Is it worth it? Uh, yeah, nah. I mean, I see these as an interesting exercise in what you can do when you go all out totally when making a pair of jeans. It's more of an art project than a garment, perhaps, but not as much as we're gonna see later on. I mean, where I see the Onis are something, something on the edge of wearable given the manufacturing process versus the price, these are about double the price, and that's a bit much, or are they? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, let me know in the comments. Right, up next, the, the Bisvim Social Sculptor 18 Damage 29. Was 29 the size? I don't know. I'm gonna keep this a short one. This is more of a PSA than a rundown. Bisvim, an amazing, incredible brand with an amazing, incredible vision, incredible products, and an incredible holistic approach to their collections. And their denim, incredibly, unjustifiably overpriced. I don't get it. And I have looked a lot, I've had these things in my hands. This is at best nothing special and at worst, not good. I'm not even sure that these are, this particular pair are, are salvage. I couldn't find anything about that. And you'd, you'd imagine that if they were salvage, they'd say it. And then there's the distressing, which is janky at best. If I was shown these without much context, I'd be like, oh, uh, H&M. There's just, there's so, so many brands out there that do the same thing and do it so, so much better. Um, here's the list. Right, now we are going from the unreasonable to the downright irrational. And we're going to go there with capital, because why not? Uh, we're going there with the capital slim fit, slim fit, slim fit flared applique jeans. I mean, yeah, here we can just ignore the idea this is a wearable garment in any reasonable way. The price tag alone, it just, precludes that, they cost $4,230. That's about seven and a half pairs of the bone jeans, which were insane anyway. So we're just gonna ignore, ignore any kind of sense and look at these for the craftsmanship. And you must admit, these are pretty amazing. There must be 
a hundred different design patches on there and not to mention the patchwork and the repair alongside that. If we just look at the patches, I can imagine that these are based on vintage one from Harata-san's personal vintage collection, which I have on good authority is extensive, eclectic and pretty epic. But each one shares the same aesthetic, the, the same language they have been capitalized. Right. The amount of work in these from the research to design to the manufacture then actually sewing them onto the jeans, it's incredible and it's pretty nuts. I mean just look at that, this one up here, it's under the belt loop, someone has unpicked the belt loop, sewn on the patch, then sewn the belt loop back on. And you're left wondering why, for sure, but you're also like, how do you come up with the idea to, to do that? I mean the level of attention to detail is what you're paying for along with that the four decades of experience and the concept and the, the implementation and the execution. I mean, that's what justifies, possibly justifies this price tag. Yeah, if you see these, a pair of jeans, that price tag of $4,230, I mean, that's, that's insane. But if you see these for what I think they are, art, then all of a sudden they are, and I can't say they're reasonable, but at least understandable. Okay, from jeans as an art piece to denim as a, Okay, nice, you can do it, but why did you do it? I mean, take a look at these. First up, I'll tell you that these cost $5,266.94. With that in mind, do you see anything in particular, anything special? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a minute. They're just a pretty normal pair of washed out denim jeans, right? Wrong. These are not jeans, they are leather pants that have been printed on to look like their jeans. Specifically, they are the Bottega Veneta Denim Effect printed leather trousers. I mean, it is incredible. I, I've seen these as someone who's actually going to remain nameless who was wearing them when we were in Paris showing. And honestly, until you, you touch them, you cannot tell this not a pair of denim jeans, a pair of mids jeans with a pretty uninteresting wash. I have no idea how they do it, I have no idea why they do it, but they do do it and they do it very, very well. Maybe the issue I have with these is that unlike the capitals, which as I said, I, I see as an, as an art piece, I think these are meant to be worn. I mean, these are Bottega Veneta and that's, that's capital F fashion. It's a, it's a weird kind of meta flex and denim and jeans. Okay, let's see where I go with this. I mean, although I do not engage in any way I, I do like the notion of luxury brands. I, I like the conceptual nature of the collections and I think they inhabit uh, an important and essential part of clothing. They're the ones who are, who are doing the new things or at least trying or at least should be trying to do the new things. This is a new thing, a new way of doing an old thing. Perhaps this is the, the ultimate in luxury? I mean, I think a big part of luxury pieces, once you've transcended the ostentatious, obnoxious face of luxury brands, you get to this sort of Zen where the piece you're wearing is for you and for you alone to, to know that it's something very, very special. And like it or not, these are that. So perhaps this pair of jeans is the epitome of luxury denim, which totally makes sense that they are not denim. But if you want a denim that does make sense, check out this video right here.